Hello there and welcome to the Hash Power Academy. This is your place to learn anything to do with Bitcoin. And the topic of today's video is delving into the question of who gets that last 1 million Bitcoin. Because the 20 million out there right now for circulating supply is easily accessible in the context of finance. There's platforms and exchanges and OTC desks and companies with a large balance sheet of Bitcoin. So this has financial ease, liquidity, and making it easily accessible to purchase and acquire. But that last 1 million Bitcoin is going to be distributed to those that build energy systems, period. There is a physical constraint as to how that gets distributed. How does it get distributed? Let's work our way up the chain of technologies and commodities to introduce the subject. I'm using the example of using natural gas, an energy commodity, in a generator, energy technology, to produce electricity, another energy commodity, running that into a computer to create hash power, the, the digital bridge between that computer in the physical world and the blocks being produced in the digital side of things. And every block that comes into existence, is, there's a block reward. Block rewards are the combination of subsidy and fees. Subsidy is subsidy, new Bitcoin coming into circulation, that last 1 million Bitcoin, and fees. That existing 20 million Bitcoin out there in circulation, and if I was to send Bitcoin to someone, I have to store that transaction data somewhere. So people are paying fees for that data storage in those blocks. And so, long story short, the last million Bitcoin, plus the fees and circulation and settlement of other transactions over time, is going to be distributed to those that build energy systems. And I'll explain why with four different examples and successes that are going to occur, really. And I'm going to do a video on each of these individually, so I'm just going to introduce them in this video. So, blocks are being found by mining pools, and I've got this diagram here where that would be foundry, that's uh, ant pool, and a tiny amount of uh, hash rate, and all the smaller pools going down. So mining pools are that collation of all different miners all around the world, pooling their compute power together to create blocks at a faster frequency, and that block gets distributed out to everyone. So those subsidy and fee aspects um, have other ways to be paid out in more frequency, but that's not the context of this video. <laughs> so let's start with devices. Now, what I want to explain here is several different components of this create an environment where there is a lot of concern right now that because the entirety of block rewards is almost all subsidy and little to no fees, that you could argue that there is very little activity in the fee market, which will inevitably take over when that last million Bitcoin is distributed. And fun fact, we will get to 99% Bitcoin mined um, within the next 10 years. So the last 1% of Bitcoin is going to take 100 years to be distributed. So we really much depending on fees. And what this does is it creates an environment where the economics of mining could be considered under threat. But this is why these particular four become ever more important. So I'll start with this. Devices. There is things like mini miners, and that is the, the Bitax example, which is older chips or even new chips as well, being turned into little mini miners, which are not economically mining, but the producers of these are generating some aspect of an income, buying a chip that may be 10, 20, 30 dollars per terahash but putting it in a device that may be sold at a higher amount. So there's an aspect of repurposing there that producers of these devices uh, are going to generate income by taking out old machines. And the analogy I always use is the iPhone. There's barely 100 million of the latest iPhone, the same as there's probably not that many of the latest mining machines in comparison to the billions of iPhones of all different older generations out there or with Bitcoin mining, the millions and millions of S19s and that growth of maybe the S21 series as well. But going back, the, the majority of the hash rate of the network is going to be that middle range and that distribution of, 
the latest shiniest toys such as Jack Dorsey's Proto Rigs coming out next year and all of the different subject areas that we can delve into. But I put it in this audio just to help you the perspective of size. So these devices are going to barely use watts. Heating systems will be delving into kilowatts. Energy sector, those that produce power and have it as an excess waste, we're going to be sort of delving into the megawatt size of things. This one we'll leave till the end. So devices are just that smaller scale of repurposing old machines where they're not economic enough to buy power at a low rate, consume those older chips to turn it into money at a higher rate in Bitcoin per kilowatt hour, but instead just repurposed as little devices. Number two, heating systems. Now, I would argue that this is the best opportunity for everyone of any scale and size because heat is a massive demand right now well, for everything, it's never going to change. And if even a small percentage of our global demand for heat is uh, provided by systems that are not just generic heating systems of all different types, but could be hash rate heating systems, a computer that gets warm, just like any other computer, but as you turn it on, it pays you money in the process. Wouldn't that be nice? You're cold in the winter and you are getting paid for every time you turn on the heating. Now there's a few economic aspects to that, but um, definitely a video I'm going to delve into. And I've spoken to all different people in industry that are decentralizing the Bitcoin network by retrofitting miners as heating systems in homes, buildings, schools, pools, you name it. There's a very, very massive subject area, but that's an opportunity for all different people. And then the energy side. This is where most of the hash rate is also going to go as well. It's going to hunt for cheaper and cheaper power. So I do see the sort of mining industry getting stretched between finance and the energy sector. We may not see a mining industry in the future because it will just be the energy sector and energy companies that are able to take their excess wasted energy and turn it into Bitcoin because they have the cheapest power. Right now, the, the mining industry, shall we say, and the manufacturers of these computers are in massive oversupply. They've produced way too many and those computers can't find power. They can't find a home to plug in. So it's all well and great having lots and lots of computers produced, but if you haven't got the power, you're not producing the hash rate, you're not earning the blocks, you're not earning the Bitcoin. And so the energy sector is truly going to have a, hard, a very large percentage of network hash rate and probably already does, and an ever-increasing amount in terms of percentage into the future. So the big guys have the access on the energy sector side of things, and you could argue the smaller scale individuals, such as yourself, and even devices, but these are more for individuals, and these two are going to be for the big guys. Again, I'm going to do a video on all of these different subject areas. Number four, I would argue I wouldn't put in alignment with an energy commodity, because number four is not the, uh, the argument that I said at the beginning, which was those that build energy systems will earn that last one million Bitcoin, but also those building the technology systems. I did say that we are in massive oversupply of miners, but what does that suggest? There is also uh, efficiency. Uh, efficiency, zero. So. What I'm trying to say here is those that produce the chips, the manufacturers, tend to be the ones that are able to test those new chips that exchange energy into money at a better rate than all older versions of computers before it. And they get to test the, uh, the equipment and hash at a better energy to Bitcoin exchange rate because they've produced better chips. And so the incentives of having money fixed in supply, but expanding our production and availability of energy and production and availability of chips, we create a world with the economic incentives that leaves a trail of older but more efficient chips and more abundant energy. That's a world that I would like to live in. And so efficiency sort of suggests that those that are the manufacturers and developing chips that are more dense, more uh, power efficient, more hash rate output, in that joules or watts per terahash conversion. The lower 
the watts per terahash is, that's less energy to produce the same amount of hash that earns you a certain amount of Bitcoin. And so yeah, again, I'm going to delve into particular videos in these four areas, but the opportunity for the majority of people watching this as an individual is these two. The producers of devices such as mini miners, um, all other different electrical based devices that could use a couple of watts, still connects to the internet and the power, and putting those chips in that process could create opportunities to earn Bitcoin. And the heating system side of things, that could be as small as a single device or a couple of machines to heat your pool or a business to keep a warm pool that you can swim in the winter or you put the computers in greenhouses and have a system that blows the, the hot air into the greenhouse or blows it out of the greenhouse. All these sorts of things are an entire subject area in of themselves, so they're going to get their own video. But yeah, one piece I'd like to add to the end of this actually is the asset that I've developed, the fractional share aspect on terahash.finance is engineered as an asset to hunt for efficiency, to always be trying to buy the latest machine, the latest shiny toy. And so what that does is it shifts you as a sort of hosted mining investment to the front, to the forefront of efficiency, which is highest dollar per terahash value and highest Bitcoin to energy exchange rate, essentially, both ways. Long story. Talk soon. I'll delve into these different four videos in, in uh, further videos. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Like, like, subscribe, share, all that branding and marketing sort of stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.